Good morning, everybody, um, and welcome to the session. I mean, I say good morning, but you could, of course, be looking at this uh, session at any time. Um, my name is Karen Adriansa, and uh, I uh, am uh, about to talk about the, uh, um, the session for the Digital Ace on self-assessing um, your, uh, the assessment um, of your digital, self-assessment of your digital provision. So this is, um, so if I introduce myself first, um, I was formerly an Ofsted HMI um, and also an adult learning inspector. So uh, I've been inspecting and leading inspections of adult communication, um, adult community learning for a long time. Um, and uh, I left Ofsted a few years ago and have been delighted to continue to work in the sector and particularly for Holex as I'm now an associate um, of Holex. So um, uh, I was, I've been very much involved in the Digital ACE project. So we've had the materials that uh, hopefully you would have seen. Um, and I was involved in those, particularly on quality and policy. Um, and uh, now I have uh, um, was asked to lead this session. I've carried out the session three times. I'm um, delighted, they, uh, they were all fully booked. So obviously self-assessment is a, um, a hot topic. And now I've been asked to do this recording. So what I'll be doing is going through the, the session materials um, and, uh, and include any of the contributions that the participants have. The, um, it won't be the same obviously as taking part, but I hope perhaps you'll be listening to this and watching this video with your colleagues and perhaps in a team or perhaps by yourself. Um, and it is really all about how to self-assess your own digital provision, your course. It is aimed for tutors, um, although, and, and that's absolutely right, that um, this is a chance for you to see how you can evaluate your own course, your own digital provision against the um, Ofsted framework. Um, uh, you may, of course, be a manager um, or a senior manager, um, in which case I expect uh, um, that this will be helpful for you to support your tutors in doing the same thing. So I'm now going to go through the, um, the materials um, and, uh, and we'll go, uh, go through the session as it is. Um, this obviously is, uh, is, is something that um, won't be relevant for you for this course, but it's useful to have it there. It's one of the slides um, and it's important um, not to assume that when you are doing um, your digital, uh, your, your online learning courses, that everyone um, knows about these basic um, facilities and basic things that they need to do to make sure they can participate properly. And you might have done an introduction, but again, it's useful to check that all your learners in your course really do know how to use um, the different uh, settings so that they can participate because not everyone will, um, be remem will remember them. So this is a useful, um, a useful reminder. Then um, a quick introduction to the Digital ACE project that um, it was designed specifically to um, support um, all ACL um, providers through the technical journey, technological journey that you have since March and now beyond. And I think that really what we all know is that hopefully one day lockdown will finish. Um, and indeed you might be um, looking at this um, when we are, we have more freedoms and we have the day that this is being recorded in January. Um, but uh, we all know that, that in the future that um, we won't be going backwards. Um, certainly we will return to face-to-face -to -face um, provision, but we're sure that, 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 that this will be supported much more by the digital provision. And that's why the, the whole project is to help you to develop your um, digital capability so that you can enhance your digital offer. And this is what this session is obviously about as well. Um, so uh, they were, um, so you will know that there are guidance materials, so what guidance materials on quality and policy I've talked about, on safeguarding, um, supporting low learners, resources, and indeed on the actual technology itself, the underpinning technology. Uh, and then there were quite a lot of training sessions um, that um, have, would have finished by now by the time you're watching this. But um, as, as uh, this one's being recorded, so are many of the others. So that will be part of the legacy of the project. So I'll now take you through to the purpose of the session. Um, 
And uh, what we're doing with this session is to um, uh, really link your course to the framework. I'm using the Ofsted Inspection Framework um, as a structure for this session on how you, you uh, evaluate your course. So I'm sure you're, you're familiar with what is known as the, um, as the three eyes. So you've got the intent, you've got the implementation, and then the impact. And I will take you through how to use those concepts and how Ofsted uses those concepts um, so that you can evaluate your own digital provision, your online uh, courses or blended courses, indeed, as a tutor. Um, what I did before I, for each of the sessions, the three sessions that I held, I sent out an email um, and um, the, uh, and that because at registration, the, um, the WEA who, who um, administered the, the registrations for all these courses very helpfully asked for the participants um, views of what they wanted and any initial questions they had. Um, so I gathered them for each course and then I sent them to the um, participants beforehand. So they knew they won't necessarily be able to talk to all their, uh, um, uh, their fellow participants um, as you would on the face to face, but I thought it was useful for them to know what other people thought. So um, I'll go through a few of these now and we'll go through them at the end of the session as well. So really it, it's looking at how did it differ from your current self-assessment process um, with one question. Um, and, and indeed it doesn't in terms of the self-assessment process, you're still using the framework, um, but of course you're looking at different things. Um, and that's why that I hope at the end, you will know at the end of the course, how you do in, indeed self-assess your digital course your digital, and even your digital lesson. So we'll look at lesson level as well as course level as we go through, as we go through this. Um, so it's capturing the evidence, um, looking at whether Ofsted um, considered tutors different digital skills level, they will look to see how you as tutors have been supported by your organization to be able to develop the digital skills you, you need um, to be able to deliver your course and support your learners. And when they, so they will ask you those questions um, and then they will fully understand that some of you have very few digital skills when you may have started digital provision, online provision in March. And as I said, they will want to know how you have developed um, and particularly how well you are developing your learners' digital skills, because they, many of those will not have uh, haven't had the digital capacity they needed at the start to join the online provision. Um, so the EIF on the next point is um, the Education Inspection Framework, um, which again, that's what other, that's what um, people wanted from this course. And indeed that's, as you've seen already, that's what I'm about to, to uh, Cover. Um, and then um, the relevant tools we'll talk about on how to evaluate your course um, against the framework um, and then certainly analyze it. And, and then, um, and of course, but the observation reports do indeed have a slightly different focus because just as your lesson plans and your scheme of work have a different focus um, to face-to-face -face delivery, so will when the managers come and observe you or when you are, if you are managers, observe others, then you do have a slightly different focus because you're looking at how well um, the, uh, there's, the digital skills are being developed as well as the subject skills too. Um, and of course, the, 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 the penultimate one, really interesting that somebody, um, I hope that this course was useful for that person um, and adaptable to their circumstances. And that's a really useful question, I think, um, for, for your learners as well. The question that you all, because that made me think that I need to make sure it is useful, um, and which is why I use these, uh, um, these thoughts, these pre-course thoughts from the participants. And that's a useful thing to do for your learners as well, is to make sure that it is useful to them and that you are adapting what you're teaching to your learners' um, circumstances. Um, and that's for a face-to-face -face as well as obviously for digital provision as well. And then the last question really got me thinking because it's how, how do Ofsted's criteria map to the new DfE Department for Education's um, essential digital skills qualification? Um, and I thought, right, that, that's what I would like to use for this course um, is to be able to, uh, um, to, to use this, this, the um, essential digital skills as though we are all tutors. So the participants on the course were all tutors and I will do that for you 
as well. Um, the, uh, the first thing I then wanted to do, so I knew what the people wanted from the course, and um, which is again, something that you might want to do for your own course as well. So you can evaluate it. So you know what their starting points and what their interests are. Um, and then I wanted to know about their experience for um, uh, 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 their understanding of education, of, of, of the Offset Education Inspection Framework. So I set up this poll that I ran um, and um, generally I think the few managers obviously we knew it very well, but people were in the middle. A few people were um, of each group uh, felt that they, um, they, they were aware of some of the headings, they heard about the uh, three eyes. Um, and some of them had a little bit more experience and a couple really didn't know how it was used properly. But it's again, it's a useful thing to, to use. So moving on now to the, um, uh, the framework itself. Um, this is just looking at the old framework because people said, what happens to teaching and learning and outcomes and the quality of education uh, in the new framework and they are in quality of education. Um, and the other headings, you can see there how the actual headings, if you were familiar with the previous headings, this is how they relate to the new headings. Um, but now looking at those headings for the new framework, um, saying new, it was um, introduced in, um, uh, it was introduced in September 2019, and obviously it was put on hold in March 2020. So, um, and when Offset goes back into inspections and they will bring it out again and use it. Uh, my own feelings as a, a, as a very experienced HMI and involved in developing um, frameworks is that um, I don't expect there to be a lot of change because all of these headings that you can see in front of you relate as well to digital provision. Um, uh, as they do into face-to-face, um, -face, but they probably will want to know how the curriculum, the intent of the curriculum has been adapted um, since the start of the COVID, uh, of the COVID um, pandemic. So looking at the curriculum design, the intent is all about the curriculum. And so the coverage and the appropriateness of the curriculum um, and, uh, and this is about what the offer is. And then you need to know for your courses, how does your course fit in with the overall offer? Then you've got the delivery, which is obviously where you as tutors are involved. Um, and it's the curriculum delivery, how it's delivered, whether you have the skills that you need to support the knowledge that you need, and particularly the pedagogy um, of the teaching uh, and, and then assessing your learners. We're looking at this today um, from the digital point of view um, as well. And then again, um, for your online learning for this one, um, for, the, for the purpose of this session today is about the impact um, about the, uh, for the, the qualifications, the progress from learners starting point um, and the knowledge and skills that they develop, the, um, digital skills in this case, um, as well as the subject skills and then how they use it. Destinations for ACL um, is often how they use, how they benefit uh, from, the, from the course. And then you've got the attitudes, um, behavior and attitudes. Um, and then the behavior is obviously online behavior is very different. The attitudes to learning um, and particularly the employability, uh, looking at, at, uh, at that again from your course, how are they developing? How, how, are they, how are your learners? You need to think about um, using their digital skills. How is it going to support them? Um, and how are they developing them? And are they following? If you've got the e-safety rules, which you will have, um, how to be a learner online and e-safety, um, and you might have ground rules as well, then that's something else that indeed that um, you will want to make sure that when you're evaluating, but that's what they're using. Personal development, the FBV, if you um, foundation British values, um, and particularly the health and well-being is a, is a, is a topic as well. So that's a, a very, um, for, for today with, um, at the moment, um, with all the vulnerability and all the concerns um, uh, around us that uh, it, it's become high on the agenda. And I'm sure that's something that you'll want to, you'll consider as well for your, for your learners. And then you can see the, um, leadership and management and slightly different, we would expect, we inspectors would inspect um, that uh, managers carry out a new risk assessment for safeguarding um, with the online learning, with the additional risks that they may be, they, um, that, that there may be, uh, and also looking at governance as well. So just to go through now each of those um, 
headings that um, the, the main three eyes that uh, what I normally ask somebody to do is to look and see what's the important word that you have here um, in the first one. Um, and you might like to pause the recording on your own or in your group and discuss which do you think is the critical word um, about the curriculum um, in, in this uh, intent of the curriculum. And it is indeed surprised to a few people that it's actually the decisions because what will happen um, what well, has happened always with the senior managers, they have the, the mission statement, which is the driver for those decisions. So you need to think, why has your course been selected? Why, why do the senior managers want you to teach your course to local people, to local residents? Um, and the reason will be that it, it fits in with the mission and the strategic objectives. And, that's, and so that's how, that's why they think that your course is an important course. And that's why you have the jobs that you have to be able to um, support local people um, to teach your subject and your course. Then what you need to think about is you've got to then make the decisions yourself as a tutor, what knowledge, skills and behaviours do your learners need to um, acquire so to be able to fulfill their aspirations um, and their development needs for employment um, in, and independence in their everyday life. So that's why the decisions are important um, and that's why you need to know how you fit in the big picture so that that will help you um, identify the intent of your course um, and indeed the intent of each of your lessons. So then moving on to implementation, again, um, you might want to stop the, the, uh, the recording for a, for a bit to see what to see in the same way. There's one word that I think that really does um, encapsulate what's meant here um, for your digital, the implementation of your digital online provision. Um, so you, um, you might want to stop and have a, have a think. And then to give you the answer to that, it's the way teachers teach. Um, and that comes to that word that I explained earlier on that came from Ofsted. Um, if I show you, it was pedagogy. It's the teaching. And so you have to teach differently. And I'm sure you all know that you have to teach differently on your online provision than you do face to face. Uh, and it's making sure that you, the way that you teach, how you implement um, your, what you teach so that uh, and assess and how you teach and assess so you really do support your learners to build their knowledge and apply their knowledge. And then the intent is how the difference that the learners and uh, that your course and your each of your lessons make to, um, to your learners. Uh, so as a result of what you do um, in the class, the way you teach and the intent of your provision. So this brings me now down to how, how do Ofsted's criteria map, um, the, the question, um, how, how do the criteria map to the essential um, digital skills? Um, and what I did with the, um, uh, for the participants, I sent them out a handout, um, which I'll show you shortly, that will go, that goes through the, um, that gives the, um, criteria for the um, for this qualification. So um, so they had that in advance as well. And that's something that we'll talk about. I think in a way it's a form of flipped learning. It's quite useful to be able to prepare your um, learners beforehand so that if you are going to use any handouts that you want them to use, that they've got a chance to see them, saves time. Um, and it then means that you can spend the lesson time with quality discussions. But before we went into the groups, I did ask about the ground rules. I've mentioned them before. Um, and that's something else of what you might like to do is to, um, to, start to halt the tape and see what you would, um, what you think of the ground rules or the ground rules that you have. Um, and I certainly have some that um, I've got that uh, I think the, um, I'm just looking for my notes now, um, that the, uh, uh, the participants said as well. Um, and this is again another tip that I'm sure you use already, but it saves time that if the learners um, know how to use chat, and that's something you need to check that they do, that I talked about at the beginning of this session, um, and then they can put their ideas um, as well. So the sort of things that I'm sure that you had, 
um, is, is about using the mute, mute, mute button. Um, and uh, somebody mentioned netiquette and they had it on video, which again is quite useful. You might want to send it to your learners beforehand so that they can see and remind themselves um, about the behaviors for the group uh, and, and the um, respect, not speaking over, over one another um, and the hands up facility I think is, uh, is useful. The other thing is that if you do have groups, it's really useful to make sure that they know that they need to have a spokesperson to feedback because then that makes it much more focused. You might like to select um, the spokesperson for each of your groups um, or, or they might do it, but certainly you might want to, um, to also check that uh, um, it's not always the same person so because that helps you assess um, your learners development as well and then the question about keeping notes of the groups um, ideas um, and that's various ways that again so tips on that um, there are when you are going to breakout rooms you might want to show them how to use it because there's a whiteboard that they can use there um, and there's also the uh, um, that they can um, make their own pen and paper notes that I obviously do, and then they can photograph them and, and email them. Um, and there'll be other ways that I'm sure you know as well. Um, but again, if you are going to use activities where they're talking to one another, it's important to be able to see um, how they're going to record their ideas and remember them. And as important, share them with you either during the session or after the session, because that's another way that you can assess their development. So I'm now going to move on to the first activity we had. I think there were four activities um, that I will take you through now. Um, the, uh, the first one is about the course. So what I need to do is to show you the course, um, the handout, and then I'll read the, um, the questions out so you'll be able to hear the questions. Um, and be able to look at the handout. Um, not quite sure how this works on the recording, but you might, well, what I ask the um, participants to do is to take a photograph of this page. Um, so I'll, I'll do a screenshot now um, with their cameras so that they can, um, they can then have them in front of them as well. So what we're looking at, don't forget, this is a digital course, which I'll take you through in a minute. It's what's the purpose of the course. You need to think about why is this course needed? Um, so do you remember this is all about the decisions? So why did senior managers make the decisions that this is this course is what's needed? Who is it for? How does it indeed fit in with the strategic objectives? And what difference would it make for individuals and local communities? And then I asked them to find a spokesperson. Um, and as you're doing this exercise, these are the questions that you need to ask answer yourself when you are self-assessing your own courses. Um, for the intent of the provision. So that's the same question that you would need as well. And indeed your digital online provision and your face-to-face -face as well when we come back, when, when, when we get to that stage. Um, so I'm now going to see if I can um, show you the, uh, the actual handout. Right, so I need to now go back. So here's a course. Um, this is the um, essential digital skills. Um, I've taken a center, so I could have taken anyone. This is one that I just happened to have. Um, I did the first course in November, so they weren't all up and running. Um, they're all very, very similar. So um, it's looking at the aims of the qualification. So we've got here the entry level, the level one. Um, you'll have this handout obviously available um, with the recording uh, and as well as you can see it here. Um, and then you've got the, um, uh, I took the, the gateway um, with, the, with the levels as well, uh, so, so you can see that they covered the actual skills area. So um, I'm just going to show you this one. So this is the one that we will go for. Um, and so you're talking about developing essential digital skills necessary for work, life and further study. Um, the, this is the aims of the qualification to interact with the digital devices and handle the information appropriately, to edit, uh, create, edit and store the digital content, to share content and the communication effectively, to develop the um, transacting necess skills necessary for life and, uh, and work, obviously digitally, and to be safe, confident and responsible online. So those were the aims of the courses. So as you look at those, 
Um, I'm now going to uh, um, look at the, uh, the questions and, uh, and the sort of things that you need to consider. So the first question that I showed you on, on, the, on the slide is what is the purpose of our course? This is the course we're doing now. Um, and why is the course needed? Uh, and, and how does it fit in with the strategic objectives and who is it for? Um, one of the things that I know um, is, is really critical um, is that a lot of people um, were digitally disadvantaged when we went into lockdown and may still be. And I think the whole purpose of this course is to find, is, is that providers like yourselves need to find those people, those local residents who have been disengaged from adult community learning, don't think the digital provision is for them and use a course like this to, as a first step um, to, uh, to digital learning and becoming digital competent. But as you can see really clearly in the first aim, the way you've got work, life and further study, um, that there are a lot of things that we already need for our everyday life to be able to, uh, digitally skills to be able to function. Um, I try to pay my electricity bill by phone, which I normally do. And suddenly since lockdown, they've said it's not available because they need to leave the lines open. So you, I had to pay it online. Um, for somebody um, who can't do that, might be something that, that, that will be a, um, a real barrier um, to participating in everyday, um, everyday life. Uh, and you find me now a job, especially with Zoom and everything else and being able to use the digital skills, find me a job now where people are not don't um, have to use um, technology. So, and that's going to increase as well as we go on. And I'm sure that uh, that will um, increase particularly because we've all had to use digital um, for everyday life and that will just seep into work. So people will be, so people who are long-term unemployed, low level of skills will probably have even more difficulty getting jobs without their digital skills. And that again, is why this course is for them. And I expect supporting people who are disadvantaged and long-term unemployed might well be one of your, your organization's um, uh, st strategic objectives and in their mission as well to support local um, residents to in, in, into work um, and to make them more productive um, and support them to their life and, and support their mental health. And if you haven't got digital skills and everybody's using them, that again can be a barrier um, for, for them as well. So that's just an example. I won't have time to go through all of them, but that's just an example um, of answering those questions for this course. So it was what's the purpose of your course um, and, and why is it needed and who is it for? Um, and then what you need to think about and what the people discussed on the course um, was uh, how to, um, uh, how, how, who, how would they know whether it is meeting um, so I'm just going to go into there we go um, so how, how do you know whether it is um, meeting the people that um, are the target groups so the senior managers might think that these are the target groups for your learners do you know that do you know whether you have the right learners on the right course that's identified um, by uh, through the strategic um, aims and objectives um, and, and then um, so how does it fit in and that's where I've given you an example of one course um, and that's where you might want to uh, think about your course as well so um, and that'll help you self-assess the intent of your course and thinking about um, what difference would it make for individuals and the local community. Um, and I think that, um, again, I'm sure you'll now you'll be able to answer those questions for our digital course that I've just shown you, but also for your own course as well. So um, I'm now going to move on to the next one. So the next activity that we had was all about implementation. Do you remember what I said about that, which word was important and why? Um, and, I, I, and I think that the pedagogy, the way that you teach your course and assess has, is different when you're doing online um, than face-to-face, -face, because when you're face-to-face, -face, you'll be able to walk around and see what learners are doing. They'll be able to talk to one another. Um, and there are, uh, and, and things are very, very different when, um, when, when they're all in their own homes um, and, uh, and, and they can't talk to one another and you can't uh, look over their shoulder 
and uh, see how they're getting on. So what I did is I took um, part of the document that I referred to earlier, which um, is the, uh, trying to see if you can see that. Um, it's the, uh, the Holex Digital Quality Assurance Materials. There will be a link on the Holex website for it. Um, and uh, uh, we looked at, so if you make a note that we looked at page eight and nine, in fact, in the handout, which I'm going to show you now, um, well, in a minute rather, um, is, uh, has a link to that document as well. So there are 11 points on that handout. Again, I sent the handout before, there are 11 points. And um, the aim was that um, they, they went into breakout rooms and they were allocated a few points each to each group and they had to identify some top tips um, for um, addressing some of those um, issues. Uh, and again, I asked them to have a spokesperson or people so they might have one person for each one. So I'm now, so that's what the job was to identify top tips for the points. Um, and we should be able to go through most of those points um, now. And again, I've got some notes of uh, some of the things that um, the people uh, said. So I've got my own handout. So I will now share that with you. Right, so we've now got the um, handout with the digital ACE um, materials. And as you can see, page nine and 10, paragraph seven, part one, I've done it for you and I've given you the link as well. So this came under the heading, what to quality assure for online teaching, learning and assessment and why. Um, and, uh, and again, as you can see there, I'm saying that there is a, a different dimension to online pedagogical skills um, that is not simply a question of transferring normal classroom practice to an online platform um, and teaching does have to be adjusted. And here are um, some of the things that in this quality assurance um, that we suggested that, that um, you would look out for. Um, and um, as, as uh, um, a manager or a quality assurance or a curriculum manager or even peer review that some of you I'm sure go to other people's classes. So we've got the list that, um, that we have there. Um, so, um, quality assurance of your online um, whatever. quality assurance of your online and blended learning provision should consider the following points. So, for you, it'd be evaluation of your own or a con or a colleague's online or blended learning, and to consider the the, the, the points in addition to the face to face, um, the ones relevant to to face to face. So, the first one we've got is technical. Um, difficulties, whether everyone is logged on at the start um, with the audio and video. Um, and um, forgive me if I, if you can see the top of my head, but I'm going to read out some of my, my notes now. Um, so um, really it's to make sure that your learners are trained, make sure that they do have the skills. Um, and something that um, I, I know that some providers do, if they have a short course, they have a, pre, uh, a five week course, they might make it six weeks. And the first session is all about training people um, on how to use what they need to use so they make sure they're logged on. Um, and also um, some people put that, um, make a video and put it on um, and also have a troubleshooting page that tutors have developed. Um, or organizations have developed that you can send out to your tutors. If this doesn't work, um, then um, try this. I'm sure you, you uh, I certainly have them um, on my cooker and my toaster and things, so the, a troubleshooting page and you could have something in the same way. So that was a top tip that came for the first one. The second one is the relevance of the, of the schemes of work and the learning objectives for learning through digital technology. Uh, and I think that is really important to have learning objectives that are related to two things. You will have your learning objectives for your course. And then you will also, I think it'd be important to say at the same time, these are the learning objectives or this is what you will practice and develop further in your digital skills. We are going to use breakout rooms. You're going to use a ch chat. Um, and uh, uh, there may be other, other things that uh, you, you might want to do. You might want them to, to, to record things 
on uh, on a a, um, a whiteboard, or there might be other technology that you want them to to be able to save their their, their documents. So that's so that you will have two things. So it's important to have your learning objectives and make sure your learning objectives are achievable. And it's about the learning, the difference the course will make, the decision you have made about what the learners are going to learn during that one, two, three hour session, whatever it will be. Um, and uh, so that they know what they're going to learn and then make sure that it is achievable through the digital online course uh, and then have ones for um, your uh, the digital skills that they are going to practice and develop as well. Um, so, um, uh, and, and um, again, the relevance of the schemes of work, again, you, what you'd also, as you're thinking about, just looking at another tip um, that came out, is to make sure that you really are supporting your learners um, and, and that it's relevant to their context, because the important thing is that they can reinforce their learning. So you might want to have something that's topical about if they're working, um, supporting their children um, at home, or there might be something that they need to do with um, for work as well, uh, with working from home. Um, the engagement participation of all learners that they that they all access the relevant resources, understand what they need to do to achieve um, to uh, what they need to do to achieve during each learning activity. Uh, and that's again, um, making sure that it is really clear. Uh, and I've given you some tips already. It's like sending things out beforehand um, as well as um, things like using the chat. Um, and the other thing, which is quite interesting, uh, which is a very good tip uh, and something that I noticed in a session that I observed was where the, um, the learners um, went offline for a bit. They all logged off. They had a task that they all had to do. They were put in groups and they worked in their WhatsApp group. And then they came back again and one of them presented what they had. So that's something else um, of making sure that everybody participates. Um, and that brings on certainly to the next one, the tutor's awareness of signs that learners are disengaging and, and their ability to respond accordingly. A tip is to have a list, which is what I did, is to have a list of all your participants and just keep a tally, a total, um, do a five bar gate, a five bar gate rather, um, of who's recording, who's talking and who isn't, so you know who you can bring in. And then you might want to talk to people who haven't engaged properly afterwards, even if you ask them to do something, so that you can just check um, that uh, why, why not, that, uh, um, and, and talk to them about how you can support them and what they need to learn so that they can participate more in, in the future. So that's another tip. Um, um, the next one is the levels of um, passive opposed to active learning. It's very easy to, um, uh, and the ped pedagogical strategies being used to minimize the passive learning. Um, so it, 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 this is why um, techniques like breakout rooms, like flipped learning, some of the things I've talked about already is to make sure that the learners are, are the center, not the tutor, but the learners are the center. My tip when, when observing as a peer or, or as a manager when observing a class is don't look at the tutor, um, look and think about what the learners, always think about the learning objectives, what are the learning objectives, and then think about the learners and try and find out and see if you can assess how well the, the, the learning is happening. Um, and um, there's also little tips that um, I saw somebody use a whiteboard. It was just a one-to-one -one session doing maths, so use a whiteboard and the tutor um, had the was was writing on the whiteboard um, and the learner could see what the tutor was writing. I think it might have been better if the tutor was, if the learner was doing the writing. So then um, and doing the discuss uh, and saying this is what I'm going to do next and this is this is why and the tutor can comment. So handing the 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 virtual pen um, over to the learners much more um, so that you'll have a question. Um, and then rather than you asking the question, it's the learners who have to give one learner, right, you lead this discussion. So it's, it's handing over um, the voice and the pen to, to the learners much more. Um, and again, making sure that they can, all, all the learners have a chance to do something like that. 
Um, moving on to the breakout rooms, which is the management of group work and pair, pair work, so easy in a classroom, much more difficult. Um, uh, and uh, in when when you're doing it online, uh, and that's why it's important to have um, the breakout rooms if you can. If not, I've given you that WhatsApp activity. Um, but if you are using something like breakout rooms, please teach them. Um, because I didn't with my groups. Uh, I just said, I'm going to put you into breakout rooms. Um, they didn't realize there was a help button. Um, so there is a help button. Um, and um, if you press that, then that goes out to the teacher, to, to the tutor. Um, and then there's also the facility for them to share the documents that, that I've shown them so they can share, for example, this handout. And there's a whiteboard up there where they can make notes as well and they would know how to save it. So all those things, so please, that, that, that those are the sort of things that they need to be able to do. So when you are using something like breakout rooms, again, don't assume that they know how to. It might be a sort of a, a pre-session or again, guidance that they, that they can have. And if one person knows how to do it, that's brilliant in a group, that's excellent. But the aim of that will be then that that person teaches the others so that then they all know how to do it and it can snowball that way as well. Um, the learning is developed through constructive thinking without a, um, an over-reliance of exercise and worksheets. Well, I've given you some top tips on that already, like the flipped learning, send things um, in, in, in advance um, and, uh, and making sure that um, there are more activities and discussions um, and things rather than just um, being sort of fairly passive and, 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 and doing worksheets because that does really lead to short-term learning and I'm sure you know Ofsted is looking for uh, long-term learning in the long-term memory um, so it's by again trying also the other thing would be that if they are using worksheets um, and exercises and quizzes which are can be fine and can be useful but how are you how are they going to reinforce that learning rather than just put that away and I got 10 out of 10 9 out of 10 what you need to do as a tutor, another tip, is to be able to pick out the learning from that worksheet and then see how they can reinforce that learning um, that they've demonstrated through the worksheet between now and the next lesson. And that's why it's important that it's contextualized into um, the, uh, what's important for the learners, whether it's a work setting, work with children at home, their everyday setting, so that they can actually know that they can use that learning as well. If it's a maths issue, if it's a craft, if it's language, um, whatever it is, I'm sure that, that, that uh, you can help the learners, not homework, this is, this is separate from homework, this is being able to use what they've learned in the lesson and reinforce it through their everyday activities. Um, and I think that's uh, that's again the similar to um, for, for number eight as well. Um, and my biggest tip when you're evaluating the learning, go back to your lesson objectives um, and see, make sure that you, you and your learners as well can talk about how they have developed at the end of the session, how they developed against those learning learning objectives. Um, uh, and I think yes, so this is interesting. Some learners may have a sense of, of loss of community. Um, and uh, I think that's why using a lot of the, the WhatsApp, um, because you haven't got chats in the classroom, have you? So that's that might be something, but also the breakout rooms will give them a chance to do that as well. So that's why it's important to think of that. Um, and then you've got the flipped learning that I've talked about already. Um, so there's reading, problem solving. If you do send them something, then you perhaps you can give them um, a, a hint of the sort of things that they need to prepare. So a problem that they need to find, a reading activity or, or something that they, they need to do um, so that they can come in with, with something. Um, and then the blended learning and the mixed learning. Um, again, it's, the, it's thinking about your lost learners, disengaging learners. It's making sure that you know who's attending, who's not, and your managers have that information as well. So um, I hope that was useful. Those were some top tips. Um, I'm now going to go back to the, um, the slide. Um, that we have so you've identified some top tips um, and then uh, again um, what you might like to have done a little bit late now but to um, uh, to to stop the recording and have a look at them beforehand 
So then what I did with my group was to then say, well, let, let, let's now um, have a look at the um, uh, at that activity too. Let's evaluate it and um, what worked and what, what didn't work. Um, and, uh, and that's what you can do as well at the end of each session with your learners too. And then you do it for your course as well. And so that's all about evaluating the, the, the uh, looking at the pedagogy, the implementation, the way that you taught, what worked and what didn't. Um, the sort of things that my group said that worked was that I checked to see if each group was on task. So they liked that because I visited the groups to make sure they were on task. They liked handout one and two in advance. Um, they felt they had time for discussions to share ideas. The, um, they, uh, they said that uh, they had very specific tasks that they had to do, so that's, that was helpful as well. Um, they clarified, they felt that I clarified the activities that, that they needed to do and that um, the breakout room discussion for activity two was better for activity one because I didn't take them through the, um, the clarifying what they had to do and how to use the breakout rooms. They didn't know about the help, for example. So that was my learning. Um, and they said that they, it worked better for activity two. Um, and I also made sure that all the participants had a chance to, to speak. So that worked well. Um, they said there were for what didn't work so well, there were too many topics for a short time. Um, and that um, they felt that perhaps um, I didn't necessarily could check um, in this short session. It was an hour and a half session. So, uh, and we had quite a large group. So I didn't necessarily for the last bullet point there, um, been able to tell who had learned what, um, only what the groups had learned. But um, by going into the, great, into the breakout rooms, I could do a little bit more, more than that. Um, the um, one of the advantages of this um, was that they could then record um, what on the chat and using the chat. So um, rather than me getting um, waiting for the answers to come to me, they were then being able to chat to one another um, and me and to the whole group um, by saying what worked. So some of these things came from people talking and some of them came from um, from the chat as well. Um, and a few tips that came from this was also using the whiteboard so that I could have written up some of the things in the whiteboard. What I did was I made notes and then I sent them the, um, the, the, the document which had all the comments on it. Uh, I sent it to them and I sent them the chat because you can save the chat as well. So that was another, another tip um, that we used as well. So what did I learn from the act? So they told me what they learned from the activity. What I learned from the activity was don't take it for granted that all learners know how to, how to use breakout rooms. Um, use an activity to teach the facility, such as calling for help, using the whiteboard, saving the whiteboard from the breakout rooms um, and saving the chat from the main room um, and certainly to provide clear instructions. So there you are, um, we, all, we all learn from everything, but I hope that's the sort of exercise that you can do with your learners and to do yourself. Um, and then moving on to the um, evaluating the impact of our course. Um, so this is really what difference is the course and particularly the lesson. So um, going now, what we're thinking back again is thinking um, about the, these are the criteria from the framework. And we're now going back to our digital course. So um, if you remember, that um, the digital course that we had with the essential digital skills for work and life entry three was to develop um, the, the aims were to um, develop the essential digital skills necessary for work, to interact with the digital advices, uh, devices, um, to create, edit, install digital content, et cetera. And so really what you need to think about is to go back to the aims of your session, remember, uh, and the aims of your course, and just to think, well, um, how well did we achieve those? Um, the attainment, so the attainment would be what skills. Um, so again, what you might like to do is to pause the, um, the, the recording and the video that you're, you're watching um, and then have a look again at the handout one um, and then think about um, what you think how you would measure the attainment. I'll go through them in a minute. And then you might want to do that for your own course as well, because that's exactly what this is all about, your own digital course um, to ask the same questions. So um, for the attainment, you're looking at the particular skills. 
uh, and indeed the qualification, but, but um, and that's tied in on a non-qualification course with progress and progress there is progress from the starting points. So how did your learners develop? And that's why you need to know what their starting points are. And that's what I had to do, why I had to find out what they wanted for my course, what the learners wanted in advance. And then I do you remember I did that poll for um, the uh, EIF of, understand, of their understanding. And you can then perhaps even repeat the poll um, at the end or, or um, so whatever digital, um, initial assessment you use, you might want to repeat that. So the attainment is the, the, the progress, um, the, the, the achievement of the qualification, but it's also the learning, what they've learned from their starting points, which is part of the progress as well. Um, progress is also how it's going to meet their personal goals too, and not just the goals of the course, which is why you have both. The knowledge, skill and development is much more specific. So listing the skills for each learner, really useful tip, um, that I've seen, I'm sure you've used, is a tracking system. So you'll have um, across the, um, the top of the page, you'll have the list of skills. And then on this side, you'll have the names of the learners. And then you can have something like their learning, their developing or their performing. So you've got the, uh, sort of the beginning, the middle, um, developing the end. Some people like that color coded, but that's a really, again, another good way of for you to evaluate the impact of your course as it develops, of actually thinking about what skills against the objectives and the aims of the course, what skill, knowledge, and even behaviors that you want them to develop, and then who's doing what. Um, and then that helps you prioritize and it also helps you differentiate as well. Destinations is what happens next if they go to a job when they leave the course, um, which is fine if it's a short course and that's the aim of the course, but it's also very much for community learning is how they use it, how your course, how they use the skills and knowledge that they've developed um, and how they're meeting their personal goals. And I'm sure you'll find that on your ILP, the reason, which is the reason for joining the course, and that would be the equivalent of destinations, that they're meeting those needs. So I've joined this course because I want to, and then how do they do it? So for you, I hope you've joined this course because you want to know how you can evaluate the quality of your, of your course and the quality of each learning digital learning session and a digital course, um, and the, the destinations for this um, training session would be that you then put some of the things that we've um, covered uh, now into, into practice. So uh, there you are moving on to back to then what I've done. So it's like the initial assessment really going back. Um, so does it differ from current self-assessment process? No, it doesn't. Uh, um, but there are different things you need to look for. And the framework is the same, but in a way it does um, because you need to, to make sure that you're considering the digital skills um, and thinking of the different pedagogy. So in a way, yes, the framework is the same, but some of the practice, which is why I think that Ofsted will still use the same framework, but they will look at slightly different things, as I've explained um, uh, during this session. Um, and so I hope now that, um, that you will be able to see how you think you can um, self-assess your digital pr pr um, provision. And certainly it's not just for inspection, um, it is for inspection, can be for inspection, but if you're not going to be inspected, um, and even if your organisation is inspected, you might not be. So it's a really good opportunity for you to um, review and work with your colleagues, whether they're the peer groups and managers, um, to be able to um, evaluate the impact, the difference your, um, your course, your digital provision is, is making. Um, and then, of course, you, you can also do that with... Um, the, uh, um, with your, um, uh, with, with, with your managers as well. Um, and that's just reminded me of something which I'll, I'll talk about um, shortly. Um, and then to, so yes, we've talked about the, the EIF, some relevant tools for tutors to evaluate the courses. Well, certainly I hope I've given you some tips and the key questions and the tools, if you like, are some of those questions in the activities one, two, three, and four that I've just gone through for you. And that should help you um, analyze your individual, your digital course into the aims, why it's there, why it's been chosen to happen, um, and how well it is, what it was supposed to be doing, what the intent of it, um, and how well it has indeed done it. Um, so, uh, and then, um, and I think, yes, the observation, as I said, the slightly different things um, because the pedagogy is, is different. 
Um, so I hope this course has been useful and I hope it is adaptable to your, that you are able to adapt it to your, to your circumstances. Um, and I hope you found it interesting and useful that we use that course. So um, moving to then uh, the other thing that I said, you remember I said that you always need to go back to the objectives. So those were the objectives for you. So I hope that now that you're able to, to do that, you're able to identify the intent of your course um, and of each lesson. Um, and thinking how you can evaluate how the way, do you remember the pedagogy, the way you're teaching and focusing, teaching and assessing rather helps the learning. Um, uh, we haven't covered perhaps the learner safety very much, um, too much to cover uh, for that one session, um, but certainly I do know that there are other training sessions on the safety as well. The only way I've really covered it is using the ground rules, um, but that's certainly something, as I said, um, that is part of um, the other training sessions and course materials as well, um, and then the difference it makes. The comment that I will remember that I had that I've scribbled down on my, my paper notes that I, I just want to remind you is that it's really important when you are evaluating the, um, your, your, your uh, learning, you need to do something with it um, and tell people. So you might think, gosh, that went well. I think that's good practice. And if you think that's good practice, then tell your manager, tell your peers, um, tell your lead tutor, whoever you think that, that they say, I think this, you know, I'm quite pleased with this. Can you just come and have a look if I do something similar again? And then it means that your colleagues will be able to benefit from it because all evaluating, all inspection, isn't just looking at to see what's not so good, it's actually to identify and share the good practice. So if you think you've got good practice and you're doing well, there may well be some of your colleagues who don't do the same thing as well as you do and would really benefit from your support. And likewise, if you think you have a problem, if you have an issue, if you think oh, I'm not using that right, then again, I think it's really important that there might be a colleague who does. So you, so that's, that's a way of then of, of, of sharing. So the clock has ticked over now to, to the end of my hour. Um, I'm not sure whether um, it be, will be timed out, but it just gives me the time to say that there are um, the, uh, you've got the project resources, there's a link there. Um, and to thank you very much for listening. Uh, I hope you found that, uh, that useful. Can I encourage you to look at all the other materials and sessions? I know there's some stunning sessions, other sessions that have happened that have really been, that people have told me about that, that have been really, really useful. So I wish you all well. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your patience. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and indeed for, um, for, for joining this session. Thank you very much indeed.